In the last video, we have seen all the tips and tricks for production ready application. Today, we are going to focus on custom widgets. You might have created custom widget for grouping all the different widgets together like a list style or something. But what I'm talking about here is creating a custom widget for a single widget, just like a button. Now, let me also tell you how things work with Flutter. Uh, it doesn't actually derive from that widget. It creates a new widget, which is a stateful and it does composite of other widget. So you can have a row, column, text field, button, whatever you want inside that same single custom widget. And you just keep on defining the properties which you can bind to any of the existing property of the widget and rest all the properties you can make it default you can provide the styles height shape color and whatever default style theme of your application now you will notice that on pressed is assigned to an empty method which means that whatever button you create there's nothing happening on a click of the button so let's make it interesting and we are going to find out the way to pass event to this custom button. So for that purpose, you have to create a void callback or a function inside your custom widget. And the way you do, you define a final, you can say void callback, which is nothing but a function which doesn't have any return type. And because it is declared as final, you have to use this inside a constructor to get this information somewhere from outside. Now you can even mark this on click as an optional parameter so that if you don't want to listen to what happens when the button is clicked, so you can just ignore it by providing a question mark, which might, uh, which makes it nullable, right? And which doesn't make sense. Like, of course, when you have a button, you want to make it clickable. So let's go ahead and use this on click parameter inside the widget and see whether it works or not. So I'm going to define on click and of course it works the similar way you would use material button or raised button or whatever button inside your widget tree because we have created our own custom uh, event and of course you cannot use constant word now because it's no more constant on click event is decide on runtime okay so i'm just going to print that login is working perfectly fine and once i click the button it should print the same thing but it is not doing anything. The reason because we have not linked this parameter to anywhere. So what we have to do on click of a button, actual material button on pressed event, we have to invoke this on click method, which we have assigned to this widget. So just make sure that it's not null whenever you are calling and you're all good to have a custom click event. Now, when I click login, you will see the message login is working a big round of applause for you guys. All right. Now, similarly, we are going to define is disabled property. So if you set it true, the button will be disabled. You can't click it. And if you see the implementation, it's really easy. Based on this flag, I've just assigned a null value to on pressed event or actual callback to on pressed. So it's a default parameter. So if you don't even define that, it's going to work out of the box, it will be enabled. But if you want, for some reason, disable the button, you can just say is disabled true, and you're all done. Compositing a widget is actually a fun thing. So let's see another example of text field, which we use very often. So instead of defining text field with all the different properties of input decoration hint and all this thing you can have a custom widget so let's go ahead and create a custom text field i'm just going to fast forward a little bit because it's just a plain stateful or stateless widget uh, which has a build which returns nothing but a text field now instead of using a plain text field inside your widget tree you will be using custom text field now is the time when we will actually implement all the properties and we will do the binding thing right so what we have done so far instead of using text field we have used custom text field which is exactly the same because we return nothing but the text field right so let's go ahead and add some properties so the first thing we want to add is decoration and i want this text field with a rounded uh, rounded corner shape and with the outline border now that is something 
for which I prefer to create a custom text field because in future if you want to add any property or if you want to tweak a little bit in the design like you want to change the radius of outline input border or you want to uh, change the whole theme instead of outline border you want now underline border so everything you can do with a single file change and it will reflect all over your application right so now you have the custom text field you can define the properties over here like say for example you want to pass a placeholder which is called hint so just use this property inside your page and you're good to go you have username and password with just these two lines of code with all the theme and property defined custom property defined right Perfect. Now let's also see some example of returning data from your custom widget back to the page. So for that purpose, you will be using function with parameter. Now here you can define any parameter, a string, integer or custom model if you want. And then use that inside your constructor because this information you will be passing from your calling page. Now you can make it required or optional depending on your need. So I'm making it optional over here. And I'm going to link it with on submitted state. So whenever you press done or next on the keyboard, it is going to call on done event with the value it's uh, it has captured from on submitted state. You can even put your custom values over here like user press done button or whatever information you want to pass back from the custom widget to this page. So here you can write on done event just like you do with any uh, method and here you're going to get that data now of course you are not going to use constant because you are providing a method or function as a parameter on done and then this data you can just print to see if it works fine or not so i'm just going to debug print it and let's go ahead and test that whether our widget is returning data back to the page or not so let's switch to soft input mode and type some data and here we have it hello one two three perfect now i hope you people found this video useful and you understood how to create custom widget basically you should create custom widget when you have a group of widget and same thing repeating multiple time and also for maintaining a theme of application you should create custom widget for button drop down text field switches uh, radio button whatever you like uh, so that it maintains the theme of application and it makes it easy to write code you don't have to make changes all the places so make sure to give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for being a member of channel code x this video is dedicated for members so i hope you guys enjoyed make sure to leave the comment and i will see you guys with the next members only video thank you so much see you next time